Welcome to You've Got This with Sarah Hamaker, a podcast to encourage and equip moms along their parenting journey. Join Sarah each week as she interviews dads and moms like you and discusses the joys, challenges, and rewards of raising kids. Hi, and welcome to this week's You've Got This. I'm your host, Sarah Hamaker, and I'm glad you join me. Today I have Nicole Black. She is a recovering elementary school teacher, a mom to three super busy kids, and mostly survives on strong coffee. Um, She also talks about raising kids and bullying prevention at Coffee and Carpool, and you can find all the links to connect with her with her bio. But thank you, and welcome to the show, Nicole. Thank you. Um, I've got my strong coffee ready to go. I'm yeah. glad I'm here. I'm drinking a strong <laughs> cup of tea, so I don't I don't drink coffee. There you go. But I'm I'm with you on that. I drink a lot of strong <laughs> black tea. It's uh, I, it's how I survive in the mornings too. Sometimes. Exactly. Do what you got to do. Right <clears throat> now, um, as as we're talking, school is in session, and mm-hmm. you know, for many kids, this means opportunities to be bullied. Um, and I know that this is a topic that I feel that. Um, has been discussed a lot lately. Yeah. Um, and it's yeah. something that I know the schools talk about, we all talk about, which is, I think, good. But sometimes I think we can get so focused on let's prevent bullies that um, for kids who don't, <clears throat> who don't really, they're like, they're not bullying, maybe they're not really being bullied, they kind of get lost in the middle. And this is a large group of kids. Mm-hmm. And we were talking a little before the show um about how how we can help those kids kind of, you know, become, I think the word you used was includers. And I would love for us to talk mm-hmm. a little bit more about that because I that is such a positive word. I'm all about let's be positive. <laughs> Bullying is such a yeah. negative subject. How can we make this positive and more appealing to kids kind of thing? So talk about yeah. what you mean by includers. <clears throat> Absolutely. So for most kids, who are bullied or who are targeted by unkindness and mean kids, the mean girl behavior, if you will, on the yard. A lot of the times it's because they are um, easy, the easy targets. Maybe they're different or they appear to be different, but most of the time it's because they're physically alone on the playground or in a situation where they're sitting by themselves and they become vulnerable, if you will, to people who are, um, who miss the message about kindness in preschool. And so one of the simplest ways that we can help our kids prevent bullying and prevent these unkind moments out on the, out on the yard, at lunch, in social situations, when there's not adults surrounding them, is to teach them to be an includer. And an includer is, it's this highest form, I think, of kindness. It's pausing what you're doing. It's looking around you and saying, you know what, that kid over there is by themselves. I'm going to invite them over to join me. I'm going to ask if I can join them. Um, introducing yourself. Can I sit with you? Can, do you want to come sit with me? Do you want to play with me? Can I play with you? So I teach my kids and all the kids that I am around. I have a couple Girl Scout troops and I get called in to help other, um, other groups of children, showing them how simple it is to be the welcome committee. So that it's not just for the new kids. It's maybe for the kiddo that you've, that's new to your classroom that you didn't know last year, or maybe they're just, they've never been in your, in your friendship circle. So pausing what you're doing, looking around, noticing that somebody's by themselves and walking over, introducing yourself saying, Hey, do you want to come join my friends or can I join you? So it's, it's, it can be tricky because kids are, egocentric by nature, right? Their brains aren't wired to stop and think of other people usually. But if we teach them how to do this and we give them the words that they can use, then it makes it so much easier for them. And it really truly is powerful in preventing bullying because then these kids who were by themselves are no longer by themselves. Right. And I, and I think too, that so often we overemphasize Friendship, and, and what I mean by that is that every kid thinks that if they talk to a child, if they introduce themselves, they're going to have to be best friends mm-hmm. with the child. Mm-hmm. And yes. we, we, and I tell my kids all the time, I said, look, I said, you don't have to be great friends with them. I mean, you could be, mm-hmm. but it doesn't mm-hmm. hurt you just to say, <clears throat> you know, hey, come play tag with us today on the playground. 
You know, those are very right. It's not a lifelong kids. commitment. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes we really build those things up, right? Because I've had my kids say right. to me, I'm like, well, why didn't you say something? Well, I didn't know. If, I don't think I want to be friends with them. I was like, well, you don't mm. have to be friends to play a game with them. You don't have right. to be really great, close, you know, bosom buddies to sit with them, at, to yeah. invite them to sit with you at lunch. I mean, just to remind right. them that these are, there's a lot of low stakes here, people. Let's mm -hmm. remind them of that and of ourselves as adults because we can be includers too. Yes, this definitely extends to us mamas where we get into a group friend and we're, um, we talk about this with our, our tweens and our teens, but as adults, we can model this. When we're standing around, we tend to stand in circles or in clumps and our body language, we're physically turned away from other people. And we've basically told everybody around us, you know, this is our tight group. We're, we're good. We're, we don't need any more people in this group. Mm -hmm. And if you just open up your shoulders a little bit and you move your body slightly so that now it's this open, this more open environment where people can approach or people can come over and say hi. And you're right. Kids do not. I tell my kids, preschool teachers really don't like this, but yeah. I tell my kids they don't have to be friends with everyone. They right. don't. It sets them up for it sets them up for failure if they're around kids who don't want to be friends with them too. Right. They do need to be friendly and they do yes. need to be kind to everyone, but they don't have to be friends with everyone. And letting my kids know that then empowers them. Well, if I don't have to do it, well, then maybe I want to just go over and say, hey, do you want to come play tetherball or do you want to join the game of kickball? And they don't feel committed to having to become right. you know, best friends, like you said. Yeah, and I think that you're so right because in the younger grades, you're like, oh, you have to be friends to everyone. I'm like, no, we have mm -mm. to be friendly. Mm -mm. There's a difference between friendly. you know, being friendly yeah. and inclusive <clears throat> with acquaintances, with people that you maybe just know their name and you just hang out at recess or you hang out at the library yeah. or whatever. And I've just, you know, right, and I've emphasized that with my four children as well, that especially in the younger grades, um, you know, mm -hmm. it's okay just to be, you know, playground friends with someone. I was just yes, you know, or just, friends. I love that. Yes. You know, or, yes. you know, certain circumstances, this is where you interact with this particular child or this group of children. And mm -hmm. that's okay. Does it mean that you're yes. exclusive other places, but just means that this is where you have that connection. And maybe this is where this child needs that connection, you know, to feel, mm -hmm. to feel included. And that, that helps them, um, you know, avoid potential situations where they might be bullied. Um, and just yeah. that reminder that, you know, kids have different, you know, comfort levels. Sometimes a kid can be really outgoing on the playground and maybe they just, the lunchroom is a place where they just don't feel like they can be outside themselves. So, um, you know, just encouraging right. them to use their strengths. <clears throat> One of my sons, uh, I think in first or second grade, he was very good at, um, his teachers told me this, at, um, you know, kind of coming and connecting with the new kids on the playground, mm -hmm. you know, kind of seeking them that's out, fantastic. you know, and I was yeah. really, really surprised. I'm like, Oh, well, that's great. Some of the things we've been teaching at home are working. Yay. <laughs> it's working. Yeah. So um, I think all of our kids are kind and they have that in them, but some of our kids need to be more explicitly taught how to do things mm -hmm. like that. So it's incredible that your son was doing that on his own. Right. Most kids, need to be explicitly yeah. taught. We can't just cross our fingers and hope that they turn out to be really, really kind, <laughs> um, warm, inviting people. So sometimes I'll ask, I'll reach out to my daughter's teacher and say, you know, is there anybody that we could be friends with? And I can encourage that relationship. Um, I always ask for who the kind kids are so I can book those play dates and kind of stack the deck with my daughter to get her some kinder friends in her social circle. But the teacher then approached me and said, hey, listen, there's a student and she really doesn't have a lot of friends out on the playground and the girls kind of all go, they've already paired up and they do their thing and she sits by herself quite a bit. Would you mind asking your daughter to kind of reach out to her? Absolutely. And so walking my daughter through this, so this little girl, she go up and ask her to play with you today. I challenge my daughter as she's getting out of the car in the carpool line, I'm shoving her out the door. Yeah. Don't forget to go invite so-and-so to come play with you. Um, ask her to be your partner today. Sit with her at lunch today. I challenge her to do that. And then when she gets back in the car, I, I follow up with her. Did you sit with her? How did it go? What did you guys do? What did you talk about? And then it gives us ways to give them specific action items yes. to go do. And instead of just like, hey, go befriend the new kid, that's very generic. Right. <laughs> and it can be daunting for our young kids. Yeah. And so I've... giving them, like, teaching them how to do it is, is key. 
Right. And if we don't know the names of the kids who maybe need it, sometimes mm -hmm. I remind my mm -hmm. children, I said, you know what? I said, you've been at this school a while, especially when they get in the upper grades. I said, you know most mm -hmm. of the kids. If you see somebody sitting by themselves yeah. during recess, you know, at lunch yeah. they have a sign seat, so it's not quite so much of okay. an issue. But in, at least in elementary school. I said, you should go go up. To, I challenge. Right. I didn't say those words, but I was kind of like a challenge. You know, I said, go mm -hmm. up to them and say, hey, can you play? It just has to mm -hmm. be for today. It doesn't mean you're committing yourself forever, reminding them low stakes. <laughs> right. 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 Absolutely. So, and, and because you're right, I think they need to know how to be kind. They may have a kind mm -hmm. inclinations, but you're, mm -hmm. I mean, you had said it spot on earlier. You know, they're very self centered. And mm -hmm. this is how, you know, they were created. And this is how we all are created. And yes. um, many of us, I would say 99% of us, need that kick in the pants to remind yes, us that there's a little reminder. Work. Yeah. In a, in a positive yeah, way that we want to be kind and remember to mm -hmm. be kind, you must, mm -hmm. you know, kind of put yourself out there. And there yeah. are so many easy ways to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. when and our kids are little. We can get, we can, for, we can forget because most of us have not been the new kid for a really long time. If yeah. ever we, you know, maybe went to kindergarten and we stayed with the same people our entire lives. Right. Um, I've moved three times in three years. So my kids and I have been the new kid on the playground where I was standing there and the moms had already all showed up and I didn't have anybody to talk to. And right. I watched my kids go through the same thing. And so having the empathy for that and reaching out to those kids who maybe don't have the tight knit social group or haven't been paired up with like their best friend for life starting in kindergarten. So teaching our kids how to do that. And a lot of schools have buddy benches now. I don't mm -hmm. know if your school has one. Um, I, yeah, I'm not sure if they do, but I've heard of those. So go ahead. They're fantastic. So basically, and they're all different and they're all super cute. But if a child is wanting a friend or needing someone to play with, they can go sit on the bench. And then it's a way to match up kids on the yard. The, I think the trick is sometimes schools forget to then they teach the kids to go sit on the bench. They forget to teach the other kids on the yard to pause their play every once in a while, look around and see if there's a kid sitting on the bench and right. then approach them right. and how to approach them. Hey, my name's so-and-so, what's your name? Or, hey, do you want to come play with us? Or what do you want to play? Can I play with you? So walking our kids through that is the buddy bench sets it up for you, but then we've got to teach our kids then, then what? What do we do with that? Right, so right. because you don't want a bunch of kids the words. sitting on the buddy bench and have nobody ever come right. <laughs> Right, because that's even worse. That's, that's right. Like, I mean, that's just that's like, you know. and like your self-esteem plummet. Yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. It takes a lot of courage, I think, for young kids, especially as they get older, to go sit on that bench. Mm -hmm. um, and then to not have anybody approach you would be, I think, devastating. So teaching our kids who do have um, more of a social social circle or they're already in the middle of a kickball game or a hopscotch game or they're on the monkey bars running over and saying, Hey, we're on, you know, we're over on the slide or we're on the swings. Do you want to come join us? Right. It's, it's a powerful thing, but kids need help with those words. They need almost role playing. They need to talk about it ahead of time. So they know what to do, but they have no idea. Our kids right. have no idea how to approach someone. They, they don't. And I love the role playing and we've, we've done this a lot and I still do it sometimes with, even with my teenage daughters, you know, like mm -hmm. when my, my oldest one was going for a job interviews and she, um, I said, well, I said, well, I said, Let's practice. She was like, I don't know what to say. I said, yes. well, I'll be the interview. Let's practice. And she's like, yeah. Mom, I said, yeah. I said, and then later she's like, you know, that really helped. That really helped. You know, yeah, it so... feels silly in the moment, but it helps. Yeah. It does. And so role yeah. playing with them. And then I also think it's important to remind our kids of the times when they felt like the odd man out. Because no matter how mm -hmm. popular the child, mm -hmm. I guarantee, uh, I would get hazard. Every single one of us has felt that left outness at one point yeah. or others in our, even our short, even our kids in their, in their short lives have felt that just remind yeah. them, remember how you felt when, mm -hmm. when you were not included in X game mm -hmm. or whatever that's, mm -hmm. you know, and just reminding them and how, how relieved you were when such and such came over and asked you to play. Oh, right. And that right. can be that. I think they sometimes need those reminders so that they will be more inclined to look and to, and, and to do that because it can be scary to go up to someone for some kids that they don't know and talk yeah, to them. 
Absolutely. And it also extends to play dates and birthday parties. Mm-hmm. So I really work with my kids that we don't talk about play dates and we don't talk about birthday parties mm-hmm. in front of people who are not invited. Again, we don't have to invite everyone over to our right. house and we don't have to invite everyone to our birthday parties, but we're not going to talk about it. Yes. And most of our kids have been excluded from a play date mm-hmm. just because you can't invite everybody or they've right. been excluded from a birthday party for similar reasons. And it does feel crummy. And so we talk about the fe- how does that feel? It doesn't feel great. So then let's take that and run with it and know that then we're not going to do that to other people. So we're not going to talk about our birthday parties. Right. And if you're going to somebody's birthday party, you don't talk about it. So as soon as we get an, an invitation to a birthday party and we RSVP yes, then we say, okay, that's great. And I know you're super excited, but we don't talk about it at recess or at school. You can quietly talk about it with your friend when you see them the next time. Right. But so walking them through those yes. social situations, because it's not just happening out on the playground. It's, right. oh, well, I'm going on a play date with so-and-so, and, and you're not, even if it's not the meaner neener and you're not invited, just knowing that your friends are getting together and you're not included, uh-huh. it feels crummy. It really it does. doesn't feel great. It does, and mm-hmm. I love that, you know, we, we have the same thing. I tell them, look, you can't, you can't talk about it. And they're right. like, why not? I said, well, because how would you feel if someone was talking about a party you weren't invited to? They're like, oh, right. And because oh, you're so right. right. All of it. All of a sudden it clicks. Yeah. 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 Because when preschool, you know, yeah, you might be invited to all 12 kids in your preschool class. But when you have 25 right. in your thing and it there's other work. kids that your yeah. kids, you're, you know, I mean, it just gets unwieldy. Yeah. And for parents to think that we have to invite everyone. I think that's the yeah. other flip side. It's not, I mean, it's, we're a little off the bullying prevention topic, but I think it's also, <laughs> I think it's a really interesting one to kind of, since we're kind of already on there to talk about is, you know, that we don't have to <clears throat> include every single friend your kid ever had for every, you know, every mm-hmm. birthday party and stuff. It's okay to say, no, you're just, you know, maybe just a couple of friends this time or, you know, right. give them a limit and help them think through you know, who they want to invite. And that's okay as long mm-hmm. as we're kind about it by not broadcasting it and, right. you know, yes, taunting absolutely. it without maybe absolutely. being that oh, I'm going to this kind of thing. Right. I think sometimes when we're talking about kindness and I spend a lot of time mm-hmm. um, in my online community talking about intentionally raising our kids to be kind, mm-hmm. we sometimes forget that we can say no and still be kind. So we can say no to the never ending birthday invite list. Mm -hmm. We don't have to say yes to our kids and yes to all these other parents. We can still be kind. We're being kinder to ourselves and kinder to our budget and kinder to our sanity. So we can say no and still be a kind person, Mm -hmm. but we just need to do it in a, in a very strategic way where we're not talking about it. And it is, it's one of the harder social things that I think parents deal with, with the social circles and, who's invited and who's not invited. And it's, it's really tricky. It's not easy. No, no, it's not. And it's, um, and it can get kind of, um, it can get, you know, fraught and, mm-hmm. um, and, yes. a whole, and a whole nother conversation, which we won't have right now, Nicole, yeah. is about, you know, people who don't RSVP when your child asks them that that's a whole nother thing. And that creates that's a whole, a whole nother, nother sense of tears <laughs> and parents out there. I'm telling you, yes. I'm looking at you in RSVP. elementary school who don't RSVP yeah. and my child cries because they don't know if your yeah. child is coming. Okay. Just putting it out there. Now, RSVP. <laughs> yes. Come on. A no is fine. Yes. Just let me know. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. So um, we're getting close to the end of our time, but um, I did want to touch on one other thing related to our overall topic. Mm-hmm. Um, um, something yeah. we had talked about before we started recording about how to help our kids not become an easy target for bullying, whether, mm. you know, you mentioned that one of your children has special needs, whether, you know, mm-hmm. I have several children who are very shy and so are mm-hmm. just more apt to, you know, withdraw from social situations. Um, and, right. you know, no matter what, or the new kid or the, mm-hmm. you know, the kid who, who, whatever, for whatever reason, you know, it can be, they have, you know, black hair and everyone else has blonde. I mean, it can be really weird yeah. how kids kind it of sure shuffle ourselves in that. So what are some of your yeah. um, top tips on how to guide our kids to not be such an easy um, bully target? Yeah, so <clears throat> bullies tend to target kids who are different, like you said, or kids who appear to be different. And that could be any any reason. It could be pink shoes. It could be glasses. It could be food allergies. It could be their religion. It could be anything. Um, they also target kids who are alone. 
Mm -hmm. Um, that's an easy, an easy target, if you will. And so kids, those kids are just more vulnerable to this. And so if we know what bullies tend to go for, we can then prevent our kids from being, um, we can, we, I don't ever want to change my kids and make them less different because a lot of, all three of my kids march to the beat of their own drummer. I can't change the food allergies. I can't change the special needs. Um, so we can't do that, but there are things we can do to kind of, um, put a buffer around our kids, if you will, and build them up in such a way so that they're almost vaccinated against bullies, hurtful words, or the physical aggression. So that when bullies are saying these awful things that were said, and it's amazing what will come out of young people's mouths, when they say these things, it, those words don't become our children's truth. It's, right. They know that they're loved somewhere else. They know that they have a strong social group somewhere else outside of school. And they, they, then they know that these bullies, what, whatever it is that they're saying is not real life. It's not actual truth because they know somewhere else they are loved and appreciated for who they are. So one of the most simplest ways is to make sure that your children have several different positive peer groups. It's one of the quickest ways to build up their self-esteem, knowing that they belong, feeling that they're worthy of these valid, genuine friendships. So if your, your kids are maybe targeted at school, get them into sports or a hobby or scouts or maybe a religious class of some kind. Get them groups of friends elsewhere. Um, and then know, make sure that they have a friend or friends at school. And for our younger kids, sometimes we need to guide this heavily. And I said it earlier, one of my favorite tricks for this is to reach out to your kid's teacher and ask them, who are the kind kids in this classroom? Who should my daughter be playing with? The teachers always know, and they have no problem telling you, these are my kind of kids. That's who I remind my daughter as she's jumping out of my car, go play with that kid. Those are the parents I reach out to for the play dates. So we're setting them up because friends will be their buffer. So not every kid is going to be an includer, but when they have someone who wants to be with them on the yard, someone who wants to play with them, it's a buffer. It it truly gives them a, a safer space, both at school and then they have, they have us at home. So right. creating these positive relationships, I think, is one of the quickest ways to um, help our kids. Yeah, I love that. And that's a great way to, um, to end our show today, Nicole. So thank you for sharing those. Um, and I appreciate you being on my show. Of course. It was my absolute pleasure. And there's tons of resources out there. If your child is already being bullied, mm-hmm. there is help for you. If you're worried that your child is going to be bullied, there is help for you. There is tons of support. I have some on my website, but there's there's support groups out there. You're not alone. Do not try to do this alone because it can the mental health issues that play into bullying. We didn't even talk about mm-hmm. mental health and what it does to our kids. Um, get help because there's help available. Right, Please. and you can um, you can find some of those resources on Nicole's site, which is coffeeandcarpool.com, and you'll find a link um, mm-hmm. in her bio. So uh, yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for joining me uh, today, Nicole. You've been listening. It's my absolute pleasure. Yeah. You've been listening to You've Got This. I'm your host, Sarah Hamburger. And today I've been talking with Nicole Black. Uh, she talks about intentionally raising kind kids and bullying preventions at Coffee and Carpool. And again, you can find that link in her bio. So thank you for joining me and I'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to this week's podcast of You've Got This with Sarah Hamaker. Sign up to receive notification of new podcasts and listen to previous editions at sarahhammaker.com. Until next time, remember, parenting might be hard sometimes, but don't worry, you've got this.